Hey, beer lovers, this is Shane with I Love Virginia Beer Podcast, your home for all the behind the, in, behind the scenes information on Virginia's wonderful world of craft brewery. Today on the podcast, we have Trey Carnes of Midnight Brewery coming to you from Rockville, Virginia. Trey, thank you very much for joining us on Thanks the show. Thanks for having me. You, uh, you have your background professionally was in IT. Correct. As I understand it. How did you get from the wonderful world of IT into the wonderful world of craft brewing? Uh, well, my joke is that uh, IT got me into drinking, so that uh, <laughs> they led down the path of brewing beer. But you, uh, I started as started as a home brewer yeah. and uh, just fell in love with it. Uh, liked that a whole lot more than I did the IT, and decided that uh, at, at the time, you know, back in 2010 when I started looking at this, uh, there wasn't a lot of breweries in Virginia, and thought that there could be a, a good possibility here to introduce another brewery and, and get things going. So uh, about 2011, uh, got the company started, rented our space, got equipment in, started filing all the paperwork with the ABC, TTB, get all that done, and then uh, we licensed in uh, 2012. So we opened and uh, just celebrated six years last month, and it's been uh, been quite an interesting ride. Yeah, I bet. Uh, you know, you're, you're starting way back in, in 2010 is, is behind the curve, or not behind, but ahead of the curve of a lot of uh, of the breweries that have come in in the more recent years why did you um why did you pick rockville to be where you wanted to be so midnight brewery comes from uh being up late at night uh, uh, you know my daughter was young at the time so you never got any time for yourself until you know after they went to bed and <laughs> so i was always up late you know Problems happened at work later at night. Uh, you know, the company I worked for was 24/7, so oh, gosh. a lot of a lot of issues happen. You know, later at night, just when people got back into work. You know, shift changes, etc. So, you know, one of my coworkers called me the Midnight Brewer uh, from the home brewing, <laughs> and so as I started looking to go professional with it, uh, Midnight Brewery kind of came about. Uh, the plan was to keep um, my IT job for two years. You know, get the brewery started, uh, get things going, and work IT for two years and then leave. So Midnight Brewery was going to be holding true uh, for a while. And I needed someplace close to home, so I don't live but, you know, about 15-minute drive from here. And I uh, looked at some other counties, but, you know, the drive was a little further. Uh, rent was a little different in those areas. And we needed something small enough, but yet, you know, big enough and affordable and uh, this this area in Goochland County, uh, we're in Rockville, but Goochland County uh, was was a nice fit for for you know the the, the price point, the the warehouse size, uh, you know that you know not the easiest place to get to, but it's not that bad. And <clears throat> so anyhow, um, wanted some place close to home, is really, and that's why we chose this area. We became the first uh, first brewery in in Goochland County. Cool. And is this the current building that we're in? You guys built this, right? Right. This so wasn't your original location. this was not the original building that we're in. Uh, we started in a smaller uh, building uh, right next door, and <laughs> uh, started to looking to expand. And uh, we we wound up uh, talking to Kevin O'Connor from O'Connor Brewery down in Norfolk, and uh, he had some equipment that he wanted to sell. We had some we wanted to buy, and so we were able to work it all out and uh, moved up here. Got this building built. Uh, that we're currently in, uh, moved moved over, uh, got this equipment up and running, and been going strong ever since. For about uh, about three and a half years now. Wow, that's awesome! And you didn't have to move very far because it's just right across. Right, right we right just across the street, right? yeah, we just kind of picked everything up and <laughs> wheeled it over on carts. So, as a, as a home brewer, uh, what got you into into brewing? I mean, aside from drinking, I mean, <clears> yeah, drinking um, is fun. But. So I always like to cook, and. Um, looked at maybe going the chef route, but um, I felt like I'd probably be standing on my feet too long. Little did I know that I, I'm standing on my feet too long <laughs> in the brewing industry. But um, wind up, you know, I, I just like to cook. I, I was, I always like to, you know, try things at home and cook, and and I just hold, like the whole process of, you know, taking all these things and putting them together, and you know, all of a sudden here, here's a product. And so, you know, brewing was something I've always, I'd wanted to do for many, many years and uh, just never did it. And then finally I decided, you know, I was like, I'm going to buy, you know, 
a, a Mr. Beer kit and try it. And did it and loved it. And, you know, not all the beers were that great, but, uh, you know, it, yeah, yeah. So you kind of say, well, I want to, I, I, can, I can do better than that. And it just gave me a lot of drive to do better beers and to learn more. And so I started reading and just trying to educate myself on it and uh, wound up, uh, you know, opening the brewery years later. And here we are today, six years after opening and still going strong. So you said when you when you wanted to start, you were planning on continuing in the IT business for two years. Did that happen and you brewed at night still? Nine months. Nine months. <laughs> yeah, happened in nine months. <laughs> so when we started, um, you know, when, when we started the business in 2011, um, the, the, the laws were, were a little different in Virginia. Yeah. Uh, in 2012, there was, um, it looked like things were going to change, and they actually did. So uh, July of 2012, uh, SB 604, um, which was pushed by, by some of the other breweries, um, you know, and that allowed us as breweries to have um, a, a, an actual tasting room where people come in and, and have a pint and not just, a, you know, basically we got our own premise license at that right. point. Uh, so we can only serve our product, which, um, you know, we do some brewery only beers, we do some for distribution, uh, but July of 2012 really changed uh, the, the landscape of Virginia breweries and you've seen a, a, a big surge in the breweries opening um, throughout Virginia. So when you when you left your IT job and went full time into the into the brewing world, um, how much brewing are you still doing now versus? I mean, I'm assuming you have a, a head. Brewery. Um, apparently, I've been banned from the brew system <laughs> uh, due to a uh, a batch last year uh, that I had a brew because our brewer was on vacation, but. Um, Anyhow, I, I'm a, I really don't brew anymore. Uh, there's so many other things to do in a brewery. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how much um, energy it takes to run a brewery, to, to just do all the stuff around here. And so I hired a guy, um, we, we've had several brewers, um, you know, a couple of them left, and then we've got this one guy that, that, that's currently here, and he came from another brewery. He, he started as a cellarman there, and. Um, you know, has some formal education for brewing, and we, we needed a brewer, so we wound up hiring him. He's been a really good asset. Um, you know, some new recipes we've got, and, you know, brewing the current recipes that we've got, you know, and, and trying to keep them, you know, to what we originally did with those recipes is, uh, you know, so he's, he's got some good talent there for brewing. Good. Talk to me a little bit about what you have on on tap at any given point in time. What what are your brews uh, beers? What are your beers like, and uh, what are, which ones are you most uh, proud of, and you like the most? Yeah, so most of our beers, uh, we kind of went down the the you know the malty um, lower ABV type beers. Um, some people say session beers, um, you know, it, it, but we have a good mix of beers. So. We keep a um, New Beginning Cold Style beer on tap. We keep uh, a Rock, uh, Rockville Red, it's an Irish red. We have Not My Job, which is an English brown. Uh, we have Midnight That's Granite, that is what you're drinking, yes. It's very we tasty. Have, um, we have Midnight Granite, which is a oatmeal stout. Uh, and then we have, um, we, we, we keep a couple of IPAs going, like we have Pretty Mechanic, which is sort of a West Coast style IPA. We have one called Lupatopia which is um, probably a little more uh, a little more hazy, a little more juicy style IPA. Uh, we have a one that's called uh, Blood Moon Bliss, which is a blood orange IPA. Um, that's been a very popular beer. And then we have some, uh, we do some one-off beers. We've got a new, new IPA coming out um, in a couple weeks. We've got uh, our seasonals. We have a Vernal Elixir, which is a lemongrass dry hop saison, which is what I'm drinking. Nice. Uh, and we've got watermelon lime Kolsch, which we just brought out for the summer. Um, that's a very popular beer. Uh, we've got Oktoberfest, and then we have uh, Christmas at Midnight, which is a, a spiced, um, kind of an English mild spiced ale. Okay, nice. So you have a full kind of a full range of, for all the seasons. <clears throat> we yeah, we we, we kind of keep you know different beers on tap. We try to keep some year round. Uh, just so people can come in, you get a lot of different you know palates that walk in here. Yeah. 
Uh, some people just come in and say, I'll take an IPA. They don't even ask, you know, what do you have? It's just an IPA. And some people come in here and say, what do you have? It's like a bud. <laughs> so you, you get a whole spectrum of people. Which um, the answer to that is officially nothing, right? <clears throat> um, I actually gave a guy a bottle of water one night. Uh, cause he, asked, <laughs> he asked what we had closest to a Bud Light. And I didn't, I, he just caught me at the wrong time. I handed him a bottle of water. <laughs> and uh Probably shouldn't have done that, but um, <laughs> you're not far off. But uh, our, our new beginning Kolsch is probably the closest thing we have, um, and usually people come in and ask for that. Uh, you know, what do you have? It's like fill in the blank domestic beer. Uh, we'll give them a Kolsch, and they 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 usually love it. Good, yeah. I mean, it's it, yeah, those lighter beers. Kind of Slight, refreshing. I mean, it's just it, it's just a tasty beer. What have you found in in six years of opening this brewery? What, what have you found has been maybe your biggest surprises in your path to success and maybe some of the bigger challenges you've had as well? Um, you know, I, I mean, there's, there's surprises around every corner, I guess, uh, but I really haven't found anything that, that stands out that's been a surprise. Uh, I did a lot of research prior to opening. Um, the one good thing about I think what we have in, in the Richmond area, um, and, and I would even go so far as to say in the, um, not just the Richmond area, but the Virginia area in general, is we have um, a lot of um, just great breweries. Uh, everybody is very friendly. Um, there's, there's, I've never reached out to another brewery and had them like say, no, I won't help you. They always been helpful, whether it's um, you know needing like grains or hops, uh, just advice. Uh, you know, you run into a problem, and it's like you know I, I don't know how to handle this. Uh, you know, you call somebody you think can handle it, and they can usually tell you, oh, I would do this, this, and this. So I think you know, especially in the Richmond area, we're we're, we're probably a little closer than some of the breweries outside of Richmond, just because I don't I don't see them that often. Um, you know, but even, you know, I've reached out to O'Connor before and asked him questions and he's, he's, he's like, you know, here, he'll lay it on the table for you. You know, there's no, I don't, I don't feel like there's any secrets with anybody. Um, so that's, the surprises don't always, uh, I don't see a lot of surprises because there are so many people we can reach out to. Uh, challenges is, you know, daily. Um, <laughs> You know, it's it's all. It just seems like the you know nothing ever goes according to plan. Uh, from you know all kinds of different things. You know, equipment breakdowns, and you're scrambling to get them back up. You really have to think on your feet. Uh, how do I, you know, oh no, my pump went out. How do I, how do I get around that particular pump and and still get my job done? Right. So um, you, you you figure out things. You have to kind of really think on your feet and and. Um, determine what, what the best option is and you know and sometimes it's just having somebody on speed dial that can get out here and fix it quickly yeah yeah that makes sense what do you think i mean there's a there's a you were mentioning there's a lot of breweries in in virginia and and there is a great camaraderie amongst a lot of them um, what is it that you think makes uh, uh midnight breweries kind of stand out what makes you unique um you know, we're, 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 yeah, I mean, it's a tough question to answer, answer really because I don't, I don't see, I don't think we stand out. I don't think a lot of breweries stand out. I think everybody has favorite breweries. Sure. Uh, because of the beer, maybe because of the people that work sure. behind the bar. Maybe it's just the atmosphere. Maybe it's because it's walking distance to your house. <laughs> that's, good, um, that's a good benefit. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, we try to make enjoyable beers. We try to make very uh, beers that, that we like, and we think, you know, people will like them as well. And, you know, we're not, we're not trying to, uh, you know, make anything really crazy. We're just trying to make good quality drinking beer. Um, you know, we have a very good staff. We have, we have you know, good friendly atmosphere. Uh, so we get a lot of families out here, so we have to be a little more, you know, uh, cognizant of that. And that right. we, we do get families, and um, you know, we've, we've had we have comedian night uh, where we get comedians come out here. Uh, so we have we have put them behind the door, so um, it gets a little, you know, the language can get a little different than than a uh, you know 
uh, a child may want to hear. Right. Might not be as child friendly those. Days. It's not as child friendly usually those nights, but um, but you know we have we have separation there, so people who don't want to hear it can stay up front, and people who do want to hear it can go in the back. They literally go back. Yeah, we clear the back out. No kidding. Um, yeah, we, it's it's pretty packed back there right now because we're you know we work during the week um, yeah, doing stuff, sense. but on the weekends we we clear all that area out, and um, we we have bands. Wow. Uh, we, we have tables that go out. We have bands. We have uh, uh, about once a quarter we do a uh, comedy night, so we, we put the comedians back there. And uh, during the winter, we bring the food trucks up to our uh, roll-up door, and we have panels I built to go out to the truck, That's so cool. we can enclose the truck into the building essentially. Make so once you get here, you don't have to go back outside. Right, make it nice when it's cold. Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. That's some great events. So you have, so you have uh, a whole other space. I, would, I wouldn't have thought uh, looking in there earlier that that would be a space that you would be able to utilize. But that's great. It's pretty amazing when you clean up, yeah. clean the floor up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the you have the backdrop of the, all the brewing equipment there too, which is kind of right. for people to see. Yeah. And people kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they're hanging out, you know, listening to a band, you know, where we brew the beer. Right. You know, they're drinking beer that just came out of those tanks. So, uh, right. you know, it's a nice little, there's a lot of breweries that, that have, you know, similar uh, set up so it's it's just nice you kind of you, you're you're kind of in the middle of the brewing yeah i saw the uh, the awards you guys have there up on the wall talk about some of the awards you've won yeah so um we've won uh, the virginia craft brewers festival uh which is all the virginia breweries enter um and um we've won uh we won gold for our new beginning coalition and rockville red we've won silver for not my job, three years in a row. So I kind of most recent year as well. Um, no, we haven't entered it in a while, okay. just because it's like three years in a row we won silver, and I was like, it's a solid silver beer. <laughs> Leave so, it where it is. <laughs> I was like, hey, uh, I don't know what makes it a gold, but it's a solid silver. Uh, and then we also won a silver for our uh, watermelon lime colch. Very nice. So those are the awards we've gotten so far. Very cool. And we try to enter different things in. Uh, you know, it, it's nice just getting the feedback and seeing what, what the judges think of your beers. Right. You were talking earlier about sending out your seasonals. Uh, you've got uh, a nice tap room here. People can come in and enjoy the beers here. What uh, what do people have to come in here for, and where, and where can they find some of your beers out and about? Uh, so we distribute in uh, all of the Richmond area, uh, northern Virginia, uh, all the Tidewater area, and then... Uh, Charlottesville, Harrisonburg, and Winchester. Um, so um, we have those areas, you know, it's, I don't know, maybe 60% of the state or so. I imagine as a, as a brewery owner, you, you're, you're, just, you're dealing with that kind of stuff. It's on your toes, right? You get on your toes. And- yeah, when things, you know, we're, with most breweries, I think they're, they're lean in personnel. Uh, you know, like you, you spend a day brewing and fill a tank. Well, that tank's got, you know, you know, it's another 15 days before you're going to bring it out of them and do anything with it. Um, you know, so you can stagger all your brews and, and you're, you're, you're bringing beers out. And you have to kind of watch. I mean, like some, some breweries, they brew every day. Some of them are brewing around the clock every day. And some of us, like, like we, we brew, you know, two or three times a week. We're bringing beers out every week and you're getting orders out. And some stays here and you're trying to create new beers. And sometimes we have a pilot system. Uh, which we kept our little system uh, that we do just, you know, we, we call it the playground. That's just a place, you know, it's like it, anybody wants to come in and brew a beer? Well, not anybody, but... Um, <laughs> you might but, get some requests. Yeah. But we have, like, some of our some of our folks that work here, they're home brewers. Right. And it's like, you know, if you want to you wanna come in and brew a beer, you can come in and brew it. And, uh, yeah, it you know, we're, we got to keep it here. We're going to sell it here. But, you know, you get the honor of saying, you know, that's my beer. Nice. So, uh, and actually in a couple of days on this Sunday, we've got a, um, uh, the, the MASH Homebrew Club, which is over uh, across the river. They are, um, we do a competition with them last year for um, August is Virginia Craft Beer Month. Right. So we did a competition where they brewed, they, they brew beer, we judge them. Uh, they get they get awards, you know, first, second, third, and we do a best in show and that, and whoever wins the best in show, we brew that beer. Oh, cool. So this year they, they're doing American Ambers and Porters. So Sunday we'll be back in the back tasting beer, drinking, and, uh, you know, and, and, and 
I'm gonna tell you, beer judging is not as easy as people think it is. It's, um, you know, you got 10 beers, all the same style beer, and you're trying to determine which one fits the best, which one is the best beer there. And, you know, my palate, your palate are different. Right. So, you know, we usually have about five judges that we all sit down and we, we score them and, and try to judge each individual one. And it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's, it's tough. Yeah. It sounds like a cool way to engage with your with your brewing community here too, the people who are coming in and drinking your beer. Right. And so these guys, you know, they're they're home brewers. They, you know, a lot of them, you know, want to have breweries and it's it's a way I mean, what a great honor to have a, a commercial product out there that, that your recipe. Right. You brewed in your garage or in your basement or Right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is a very cool idea. So you guys are you're six years in. Um and you're doing great. You have this beautiful facility and a, and a cool location. Where do you where do you see yourself in say six more years? Where do you want to be? Um, you know, we're when we moved here, we had a, <clears throat> you know, we kind of we grew considerably from our original building to here, uh, equipment wise, building wise, and so we knew it was going to be a couple year ramp up before we got to you know half production, full production. Sure. Um, so we, we've got, you know, probably another uh, two years we'll be at full production. And it, that's where, you know, before that we have to start deciding what we're gonna do, you know, replace equipment, add equipment, move. Um, so these are things you kind of look at. And, and this is a changing market in Virginia. Uh, you know, do we go outside the state and, and start trying to distribute? Um, you know, that could be a game changer. But in uh, another five years, uh, you know, we'll be at full production. We'll also probably be looking at, um, you know, a, 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 either a move or a, um, you know, adding onto this building and changing out equipment. You know, adding bigger, bigger tanks, bigger brewing system uh, to get more production out. You know, bigger bottling lines or canning lines, whatever, whatever route we wind up going down. That's great. What is it? Uh, any, well, actually, I should say, what is it? Is there anything that you that you want our viewers and listeners to know about Midnight Brewery that we haven't already talked about? I don't think so. I mean, we're you know I, I work the tasting room a lot. If you got questions, come in and ask me. Um, <laughs> come ask for Trey. Yeah, come ask for me. Uh, I'm here m most every night, and honestly, this is I really enjoy working festivals and I enjoy working the tasting room because this is where you talk to the consumer. Right. And, you know, we can make all the beer in the world we want, but it doesn't do anything. You know, it's the consumer that that says, you know, I like this beer, I'm buying this beer. Or they don't like that beer and they don't buy that beer. So there's nothing worse than having a beer just sit and doesn't doesn't sell, right? So we want to, and, and we have a lot of, you know, loyal customers that come in and go, you know, I, I didn't like that. And they'll tell you, and, that, and that's what we want to hear, you know. Um, you know, I, I personally, um, I will not, and, and, and all of our people that work here, they sign a, a, a um, code of conduct. And the very, the very first thing is, you know, we do not badmouth other breweries, period. Right. There, there is, I mean, it's, I, I don't care if you, you do not like any of the beer, because uh, it really irritates me to, pe people get very generic and like, you know, oh, they suck. Well, what sucks about them? And, and then when you start talking to it, they find out, well, well their beers are really hoppy. I'm like, well, you don't like IPAs, right? right? It means you know, they make fantastic beer. It's just, you don't like IPAs, so right. it's not your style of beer. Um, but you, you talk to customers, they, they give you the feedback. Uh, so, you know, people can say, you know, I've had some of our, our regulars, they come in, they go, you know, this beer had a certain flavor, and they'll, they'll explain it, and we'll taste it, and we'll chat, and and sometimes you come out and you go, yeah, it, it does. It's, it's you know, we, we got to fix that or we're not going to bring that beer back. Right. You know, and they just scrap that beer and move on down the road with a different one. But, um, you know, breweries like feedback, but they like honest feedback and they like specific feedback. But um, working the tasting room, working festivals, you talk to the guy who's buying your beer and, you know, you get feedback from them usually immediately while they're tasting your beer. But it's a great way to find out what people like, what people don't like. Um, people get to hear my story, they get to talk to me. 
uh, you know, I get to talk to them, find out, you know, where do you like to go hang out and drink? And it's, it's, it's a lot of good feedback that you get. It's great. Well, thank you very much, Trey, for being yep. on the show today. Thank you. Coming down, coming live to you from Rockville, Virginia, Midnight Brewery. Come on down and check it out. Cheers to you. Cheers. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page and our Instagram, uh, Instagram feed. You can like us there. And check us out on iloveVirginiaBeer.com where you can get this amazing hat with a beer opener in it, T-shirts, and much more. Thank you again very much for joining us. Have a wonderful day.